deep brain stimulation and major depression. In cases where depression patients do not respond to psychotherapy, medical drugs, or electric convulsive therapy, surgery or other more severe procedures may be used. Deep brain stimulation for major depression is still an experimental technique. It seems to only work so far on a small subgroup of patients that it has been tried on. Experimentation with brain stimulation techniques began in the 1930s with Wilder Penfield. He used brain stimulation by placing electrodes in the patient's brain to stimulate areas helping to cure epilepsy. Unfortunately, this did not work, but brain stimulation research continued until about the 1960s. In the 1960s, deep brain stimulation first appeared and was used for Parkinson's, but at the time, Another, less invasive technique also appeared, and deep brain stimulation quickly fell by the wayside. In 1987, it was revived and used for Parkinson's, but unfortunately, at the time, it was not used for major depression yet. It was approved for Parkinson's in 1997, and shortly after that is when they began, began experimenting with other types of mental disorders. In the early 2000s especially, quite a bit of research was done on its use for major depression. It does require surgery and it works by placing a pacemaker, usually around the chest area. This pacemaker controls the electrical signals that are sent up the wires to the electrodes in the brain and it fires at set intervals and set voltages. The electrodes in the brain are placed by stimulating the various areas of the brain and seeing which ones show abnormal firings. Usually two or three electrodes per patient are placed in the brain areas. For depression, areas like Brodmann's area 25 are relatively common areas to stimulate. Generally speaking, 0 to 4 volts are used to stimulate areas, 0 volts being no voltage, 1 or 2 volts being mild, and 3 or 4 volts being stronger. Some patients do not respond well to 1 or 2 volts and may even show worse symptoms, while they respond very well to 3 or 4 volts. Other patients respond well to all voltages and show greater benefits at higher voltages. Generally, patients with depressions are the latter. This picture shows areas of the brain that deep brain stimulation has been used on for depression and drug use, such as the ventral striatum, and the nucleus acupen. It has not been approved by the FDA yet and is still in experimental phases for depression. There are four major studies that, have not, that were not sponsored and therefore independent and more reliable. These studies include a 2005 study on six patients. 66% of patients with mild insomnia showed improvement in their depression and more interest in life after the treatment for six months. However, 33%, those with more severe insomnia, received no benefits from the treatment. Some of them also showed signs of having infection where the electrodes had been placed. In the 2007 study, three patients were studied, a woman and two twins. All these patients received benefits. None of them showed severe side effects, although one of them did show signs of infection. One of the twins, received less benefits for the, uh, than the others, but he was not known to fit a significant different profile. In a 2012 study, it was, they decided to test to see how long patients would continue to receive benefits from brain stimulation. It was this two-year study on 17 patients. All patients received benefits from the treatment for the full two years, thus the longevity of the treatment has been proven, or at least seems to be true. However, some patients did not respond immediately. It took time for the benefits to show for them. It's unknown why this is the case. The last study in 2013, six patients. For the last study in 2013, six patients res responded to low voltage better than previous studies. It's unknown that these patients fit a different profile, um, but it was found that low voltage is more effective than previous studies had indicated. 
in general, patients that have been studied, they generally do receive either positive benefits from the treatment or neutral benefits. In other words, no negative, negative benefits were shown. However, some patients, particularly those that do not benefit from the treatment, seem to be prone to infection in areas where the electrodes have been placed. Deep brain stimulation and depression today is still experimental and has not been FDA approved because of the treat because of the treatments. General iffiness, in other words, studies have shown it's effective, but there are still many questions we have about it related to deep strong depression. Unlike Parkinson's, it's just not as well known. Um, some of the most current studies that are being done outside of company sponsored studies are done by the military. They are studying the use of deep brain stimulation for PTSD, depression, and other mental disorders. The military is studying potentially combining deep brain stimulation with AI, or artificial intelligence. This AI would determine when normal firings were occurring and only send voltage then. It would determine the level of voltage as well as when the voltage occurred. It's believed that this would increase the treatment's benefits to the patients, but it's still in very early trial phases and no studies have been completed that are known. Ethical use of deep brain stimulation. Because it is a private company's product and it's been pushed strongly for other mental illnesses after it was proven to be both quite effective for Parkinson's as well as of course quite expensive to use, um, the company decided that they want to try it for other mental disorders. While many of these disorders have shown to receive benefits from this treatment, there have been questions, such as for example a study from New Zealand in 2015 about the ethics of allowing the company to determine whether it should be FDA approved. Specifically, they question what kinds of patients this should be used on and is safe for and their determination is that it should only be used as a last resort method for patients that psychotherapy, electroconvulsive therapy, um, medical drugs, and even some other milder, potentially milder surgeries have failed. This is for the patient's safety, they suggest. Uh, another question is, is because it is a surgery, what kind of side effects could it have and how severe are they? So far, the main side effects are from the surgery, specifically obtaining an infection in areas that the electrodes are in place and generally speaking generally speaking the um, electrodes that they do cause infection do not have to be removed but in some cases it's indicated by the study overseers that they may potentially have to be removed in other words it might require another surgery uh, the final two questions are more theoretical they are, the military AI usage has also been suggested to combine a treatment for deep brain stimulation with AI that can monitor human brain activity, specifically whether soldiers or veterans might desert or betray their country. Um, obviously this is a very questionable use of the technology and it's generally been criticized that they should not be using a technology to improve people's depression and treat it and combine and basically weaponize it against soldiers and their own people. The final question that was, has been brought up about this technology is whether it can affect the human self, or in other words, whether it cannot just improve and treat the mental disorders, but whether it can actually affect how one thinks. Um, currently, this has not been shown to be the case, but if they begin to integrate more and more mechanical parts into a person, the question is, would that person actually remain a person, or would they be, in a way, partially AI controlled? All these questions have been brought up and are still under heavy discussion with regards to deep brain stimulation in general, not just for depression. Thank you for listening to this presentation on deep brain stimulation and depression. I'm Rachel Higgins, a student in cognitive science class, and thank you for your time. Bye.